So St. Peter Claver poured out his life in service to the slaves being uh, in South America. And uh, he baptized uh, tens of thousands of them, even some say hundreds of thousands. So he, um, he worked diligently for, uh, for justice for the slaves, that they would be properly treated, they would have human dignity, they, they would have the opportunity for religious education, that they could be baptized, all of those things. That was his life's work. And, uh, and so we remember St. Peter Claver and his spreading of the good news, right? The good news. You know what the word gospel means. The gospel means, the word gospel means essentially good news. The proclamation of joy. And just a little history, little, little history of the word gospel here. It comes from a Greek word, evangelion. And if you're spreading the good news, if you're spreading the evangelion, you become an evangelist, okay? So that's what it means to evangelize, to spread the good news. And how did we kind of come to the idea of using this word gospel, the good news, or the proclamation of joy? It's like, hey, Jesus has come. Let's invent a new word, the gospel, right? Nope, that's not the way it worked. The way it worked is like this. And this is uh, when the Roman Empire was taking over the Mediterranean, they proclaimed the peace of Rome, is what they called it. Now granted, the peace of Rome came at the end of a sword, when lots of crucifixions and lots of persecutions. But they proclaimed the peace of Rome, and anything that the, anything that the emperor said or proclaimed, or a victory in war, you know what they called that? They called that the gospel. And the gospel would have gone out after a battle. They would have sent out evangelists to spread the, the news, you know, if you will. And there was another thing that the emperor had declared. He had declared himself the Lord. And so there were these things that were happening around the time our Lord was born and the good news was of his birth was proclaimed is that the um, is that Caesar was declared as Lord and you kind of had to say this to be a good member of the of the uh, empire you had to say uh, that uh, Caesar is Lord and so when Paul came along what did he say? He said, Caesar is not Lord. What did he say? Christ is Lord. Jesus is Lord. And this is the good news, not that. The good news is, and so St. Paul says in the, in the first reading today, if I preach the gospel, it is no reason for me to approach. So that I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge. I do not make use of my right in the gospel. I do this for the sake of the gospel. He says it over and over and over and over. And Paul knows that he has been entrusted with this precious message of the true good news. And you know what Paul's life was spent doing? He spent his life proclaiming the good news in every town and city that he went to. And what is the good news? The good news is that Jesus Christ has been born. Jesus Christ has taken upon our sins, that Jesus Christ has established not the Roman Empire, but the kingdom of God, right? And we are called to be citizens of that kingdom, to be reborn in Christ. And that, my brothers and sisters, is, a good, is the good news. And when we live our lives in Christ, it's not, it's not without its discipline. Every athlete exercises discipline in every way. And if athletes, and you all should know how hard athletes work and how much they discipline their bodies and how much trouble they put themselves through to win a perishable crown. And we, we are shamed by them in some respects. 
we should fast and we should pray and we should do discipline our bodies as we live our lives uh, conform to Christ and the good news of his victory over sin and death.